I'm Tony Ceruto. I'm with Overland Experts. This is Mike Morrison, and that's Charlie McMahon. On behalf of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association, we'd like to talk to you about how to safely put a vehicle that's been rolled over or flopped back on its wheels. So the inevitable has happened. Unfortunately, we're on a great day on the trail, and someone rolled their vehicle on its side. Nine times out of 10, if you're doing a slow trail ride, the vehicle will do a slow roll on its side, and if you're really unlucky, all the way over. In this case, the vehicle has just come up on its side. What we want to do is get this vehicle back on its wheels as safely as possible. But what we have to do is make sure that it's secured and safe to do so before we get going. So in the event of a rollover, the driver is going to be the first one to know that the vehicle is rolling over. He's going to want to announce it, roll over, roll over, roll over, so any passengers that he might have in the vehicle knows what's going on and know what to do. The driver will have both hands on the wheel and he'll drive that vehicle until it comes to a complete stop, regardless of whether he can recover it or not. Any passengers, it's recommended to either grab onto their seatbelt or grab onto their own clothing like this so we don't have hands flying out the sides. Once the vehicle comes to a complete stop, the driver will do an inventory of everyone, make sure everyone's okay, and then we can go into the procedures of getting this vehicle safely back on its wheels. Once the vehicle has come to a complete stop, the first thing the driver needs to do is shut down that vehicle. Shut the ignition off and lock it down. Lock it down by putting the e-brake on. If, it's, if he can put it in gear, he'll put it in gear. Then we can start getting people out of the vehicle. Before we do anything to the vehicle, we're going to come up and assess the situation. We're going to use all of our senses as we approach. We're going to use our eyes, our nose, and our ears. We're going to be looking for smoke. We're going to be listening for any hissing noises. And we're going to be smelling for gasoline or any fluids that might combust before we can get a chance to get it safely back righted on its wheels. We might even come up and making sure that nobody is around, give that vehicle just a little push to make sure it's not going anywhere. And just to be safe, if we think it might roll further, we can go ahead and tie that vehicle off in the, in the most efficient manner possible. Using a synthetic winch line extension, we can actually come to the frame and tie off to the frame or a hard point on the vehicle to make sure that it's not going to roll. Connected. And then come into the closest tree or other safe objects such as another rig that's safely parked and locked down. We can actually tie off the vehicle again just to make sure that it's not going to roll any further. Once the vehicle is secured and we feel good about it not going anywhere, we can start to go into the procedures of how we want to make our connections to get this vehicle back on its wheels. So now we have the vehicle secured. We're pretty sure that it's not going to go anywhere or roll further. We're going to use a technique using two winches. One winch is actually going to pull the vehicle over this way to ride it back on its wheels. And then we'll use another winch on the other side to actually act as a counter to let off the slack of that vehicle so it just doesn't flop back on its wheels. Remember, it might have been just a soft roll. There's a very good chance if the less damage we do, the more likely we can actually drive this vehicle out or tow it out a lot easier without breaking beads or doing any more unnecessary damage. So what we'll do is we'll rig the top side using soft shackles and the bottom side using hooks and screw pin bow shackles because we know that a lot of people more than likely have a variety of different equipment that they can use. Connect the top side of the vehicle. Now the top side of the vehicle is the side that's being pulled by the top winch to put it back on its wheels. 
What Mike is doing right now is using a soft shackle and a three inch, eight foot tree saver, and he's going around the B pillar. And we know that the B pillar is the strongest pillar on that side. Well, what's a B pillar? A pillar, B pillar, C pillar, and so on and so forth, the longer your vehicle is. The B pillar, because it's straight up and down, and in the middle of the vehicle is the strongest portion or the strongest structural portion that supports the roof. The A pillar, not so much. It's on an angle. So especially if you were to roll a vehicle and pop the windshield out and try to use the A pillar as a support, well, it's already compromised and at an angle. It won't be as strong as the B pillar. The B pillar is also the thickest portion of the structure between the body of the truck and the roof. So that's why we want to hook up to the B pillar and it's a pretty good place to do so. So now that Mike has connected the tree strap to the B pillar on the other side, using a soft shackle and another tree strap, he can throw it over to Charlie, who will catch it on this side, so they can get ready to hook it up to the actual winch. So for this rollover, we're going to use a redirect using a pulley block. Reason we would do that in this particular situation is maybe we could not get perfectly perpendicular off the vehicle for our rollover. We don't want to be at an angle pulling with our vehicle because then we pull the vehicle and possibly spin it doing more damage. So to do that, we pick a tree that's perpendic perpendicular off of the vehicle and we can make our connection there. So using a pulley block and a soft shackle and my tree strap hooked up as a basket, I feed my soft shackle through, put my winch line through the pulley block, close it, and make the connection with my soft shackle here. Now we can pull perpendicular off of the vehicle, pulling it straight here. Now we would pull to the vehicle and connect directly to it using another soft shackle and here we're using a Factor 55 thimble. That is a closed loop system, making it safer than a hook. Connected. At this point in time, we're connected, so we can go ahead and take the slack of the winch up, putting the load on the vehicle and the winch, getting rid of the need for our preventer. When we're running the winch in, I'll give my hand signals for the standard winching and tell the driver to winch in. I work the winch line in hand over hand, keeping tension on the winch at all times. Now our winch line's tight, so we know that the winch will hold the weight. It's plenty rated, plenty high enough to hold the weight of this vehicle for the rollover, and we can safely work on the opposite side to rig up the other winch with the kinetic rope. So now we're gonna make the connection for the opposite side for our other winch. We're gonna use a strap as a choker around the frame. That'll give us our rolling motion to roll the vehicle back upright. As we're hooking it up, we're looking for any sharp points so we don't damage our rope or our strap. And we're hooking it and connecting it and we will throw it back over to the other side of the vehicle. Coming over. Making sure that our straps are as close together as possible so we don't corkscrew the vehicle on the ground causing more damage. The closer they are together, the more likely they are to pull together. So on this side, we'll be using a screw pin bow shackle to connect the kinetic rope to the strap. You prefer to have the bow portion of the bow shackle around the eye of the strap and the pin portion through the eye of the kinetic rope. So at this point in time, if you were worried about the vehicle and the damage being done to it, because we are using metal on this side, we can take something soft and put it underneath where the bow shackle will connect with the body once there's tension under the winch line and it's back on all four wheels. Here we're using a floor mat 
we can easily pull out of the vehicle and it provides some protection to the roof of the vehicle from the screw pin bow shackle. So here I can connect this hook directly to the eye of the kinetic rope. The reason that we're using a kinetic rope or a snatch strap in this position is because we want a little bit of give in the recovery. That way we don't crush the roof of the vehicle down any more than it already is. So it adds a little bit of flex so that this will flex over the top of the vehicle as it's rolling over. Sometimes you have two winches that travel at different speeds. So you do have to have that flex in there. If you don't, then one winch could overrun and you could cave a vehicle in very quickly. So now that I'm connected, I alert everyone, let them know that I'm connected. We have a live line and I'm ready to take the slack out of this winch line. Standing up, I give the signal to winch in and I guide the winch line in hand over hand. When doing winching operations, it's a good idea to use what some people refer to as a winch parachute or a winch sail. What we have here is a handy one made by Super Winch that can double as a bib that you could put your gear into and run up to your recovery site. But more importantly, it's to act as a dampener for a line in the event that it should break. Now synthetic line, as a rule, breaks in a straight line and falls. Whereas a steel cable will break and because it's wound on a helix, we'll get this big whipping motion and it's really dangerous. At this point in time, we're ready to recover the vehicle and roll it back over. We need to identify someone in this situation to be the director of the recovery. Since we have two winches going and we need to control when they're both running, I need to stand somewhere where I can give hand signals to both people at the same time in both vehicles. So it's kind of like rubbing your belly and patting your head. I'm gonna have to identify one hand to the vehicle on my left and one hand to the vehicle on my right. And I make sure at this point in time they also understand the hand signals that I will be giving them. So I go ahead and have them crank their vehicles and have them running because we don't want to run the winches without the vehicles running and we're ready to start the recovery. And that's how we successfully roll over a vehicle, the safest method possible, doing the least amount of damage.